Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. Welcome to those of you who are joining us online and to those who are attending here in person. My name is John Turvey. My pronouns are he, him, and I will be your service leader this morning. I will be joined by our minister, Reverend Rosemary Morrison. We do hope you feel welcome here. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, religious, multi-generational community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free-thinking, spiritual, questing individuals joined in common support and action. We welcome diversity, pursue the common good, and work for justice. We believe in the compassion of the individual heart, the warmth of community, and the search for meaning in our lives. We gather with gratitude this morning on Treaty 6 land. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to, all, to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all our children. And so, as we begin this special hour together, I invite you to quiet your devices and yourselves so that we can all enjoy this service together. May we be reminded here of our highest aspirations and inspired to bring our gifts of love and service to the altar of humanity. May we know once again that we are not isolated beings, but are connected in mystery and miracle to the universe, to this community, and to each other. We now have uh, one announcer with apparently three announcements. I will invite Reverend Rosemary up for that. That's some tough math there, John. He teaches math. Comics. And I was just saying, I was joking that that's some tough math, but anyway. <clears throat> it wasn't funny, apparently. <laughs> anyway, my name is Reverend Rosemary Morrison, and I have the distinct pleasure of serving this congregation here in Edmonton, the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. It is such a pleasure to be here with you this morning. I do have three announcements. Um, we want to let you know that Barbara Appleton passed away on October 7th of this year, just last week, and a light celebration of her life will be held this coming Wednesday on October 25th at 2 p.m. at the Evergreen Funeral Home on Fort Road. Her obituary is online, and we will be putting it in the newsletter for you for those that knew Barbara. Um, that might be something you'd like to attend. Um, I also wanted to let you know that the UU on Tap will be a week this coming Monday at Brewster's in Unity Square. You can arrive any time after 5.30. So it's not this coming Monday, so like tomorrow. It's a week tomorrow, the last Monday of each month. And I also wanted to let everyone know that Gordon um, Ritchie, our, our, our beloved uh, choir director and pianist is uh, home and recovering and doing okay and is open now to texts or visits and that kind of thing, feeling, feeling secure uh, that that will not be overtaxing for him. So um, I'll be contacting Gloria. They're looking for a couple of meals uh, a week as well, so I'll contact Gloria and she can kind of organize that. Um, so... Just, just a heads up on that if you're a, a cook, if you like making casseroles and things. Uh, I also want to acknowledge the devastation and the heartbreak in the Middle East. And as we um, light memorial candles this morning, I will, I will be lighting a memorial candle or a candle of remembrance of heartbreak, all of the things um, for those in the in Israel and the Gaza Strip and Palestine uh, to that, are, that are suffering and give thanks that some humanitarian aid has made it through into Palestine. I think that's it. Thank you.
We are very grateful to be joined today by Karen Epp, who has graciously agreed to be our pianist while Gordon and Karen are away. Karen will begin our time of contemplation and music with a prelude. Thank you so much, Karen. That was beautiful. I would also like to add my welcome to John's. So welcome to everyone here. Welcome to everyone online. So glad you're here on this kind of starting to feel like Fall Sunday, finally, but sadly. It has been an incredibly beautiful fall for us. I've been enjoying walking in the river valleys. Valley. Well, we only have one, don't we? But it's, it's all over the place. It's, it's really big. So we could call it valleys. Trails. Trails. So I also would like to say thank you to all of you who join us later on on YouTube and are able to find us in a week, a month, a year, whenever you decide that you want to tune in to this service. Our opening words are by Reverend Sarah Lenzi. And they really spoke to me. We call this part of our service the opening words. I suspect you read it as I always have, to mean the words that begin. Here we use opening to signify a beginning. These words will open, will begin this time we share. But there is, and often is, another layer these words, this moment in our service is intended not simply to mark the beginning, but also to do the work of opening. The work of breaking apart the tight hold we have on what we think we know, 
who we think we are, what we believe we can control, who we expect to become, these words are meant to open. These words that each Sunday call us into a time that is special, a time away from time, a time for quiet and contemplation, for slowing down, for simply being still. These words that each Sunday call uh, call us into a community that is sacred, a community that is welcoming and encouraging. These words that each Sunday call us back to the center, to the deep places inside us where we find our strength and our values. These words that each Sunday call us into our hour together. These are opening words. Designed to crack open our minds and our hearts, to let the sun, to let the light shine through to illuminate what has been growing and strengthening in the fertile dark. Let us step into the opening together and let us see what we can learn. I invite John up to do our chalice lighting and Chantal to light our chalice. I would like to invite Chantal Blanchard to come up and light our chalice as I read these words. Our Unitarian heritage bids us light our chalice in the name of freedom, in the light of reason, in actions of tolerance, We gather in community to celebrate a heritage of freedom, reason, and tolerance. Our universalist heritage bids us light our chalice in the name of faith, in the light of hope, in actions of love. We gather in community to celebrate a heritage of faith, hope, and love. Let us bring this Unitarian universalist heritage into our world and our lives today. And now, thank you, Chantal. And now, our first hymn is number 360. Here we have gathered. For those online, the text will appear on your screen. Please rise in body and spirit as we sing together hymn number 360.
our community is entirely self-governing and self-supporting. One of the privileges of our free church tradition is to provide all the financial support for our many ministries from among ourselves. Generosity, therefore, is one of the spiritual values we recognize as central to our personal and institutional well-being. In addition to supporting this church community, we also make a monthly commitment beyond our walls. One half of the unidentified cash that is received is given to an outside organization. Some are local, some national, some international. For the month of October, we are sharing our abundance with Child Haven International. Child Haven is a wonderful charity run by the dynamic duo of Fred and Bonnie Cappuccino. They assist children and women in developing countries who are in need of food, education, health care, shelter and clothing, emotional and moral support. For those in the sanctuary, you can use the envelopes found in the inside cover of the hymn book if you wish to receive a tax receipt for your gift. Please indicate on the envelope your contact information so we can send you a tax receipt at year end. Many of our members and friends give monthly or annually through automatic withdrawal from their accounts. For those of you online, we encourage you to visit the Child Haven International website to make a donation. The offering will now be received. We thank you for your generosity and your support. With our time, our talents, and our money, we support the work of the community and this Unitarian Universalist tradition. The rich heritage of, the Unitarian universe, of Unitarian Universalism helps to shape our individual and collective identity. In turn, our individual and collective actions help shape our heritage. The guidelines offered by the seven principles of the Unitarian Universalism help us continue to embrace diversity, liberal theology, and social justice. They are constellations and compasses to help us navigate our blue boat home. Our principles speak of people. The inherent worth and dignity is a given. We are just, equitable, and compassionate, treating all people with fairness and understanding. We encourage and foster individual and collective spiritual exploration. In our search for truth and meaning, we encourage ourselves and others to doubt and to explore individual beliefs in the spirit of intellectual freedom. We expand our principles to include the democratic empowerment of the individual at both the congregational and the societal levels. We work towards peace and justice and encourage others to do so. There are times when our global vision for a harmonious and equitable world seems hopelessly naive and unrealistic. Yet together, we nurture and remind ourselves of our goals and aspirations. I love the last principle. It is so audacious, breaking free of all constraints not just the individual, the congregation, the community, the country, the world. No, in its vast extravagance, the seventh principle embraces all existence and links us to all things now, in the future, and in the past. We are at once reminded of the immense power of our imaginations and the humility of our own individual, puny existence. But 
It is from our own puny existence and our trivial interactions amongst ourselves that I gain my sense of heritage and identity as a Unitarian. I worked years ago with Susan on the roof, trying in the driving sleet and wind to stop a leak over the warehouse. We could have talked then of our heritage, but the wind would have swept our words away. I was up there again in the blazing sun with Gaylord and Art. The tar was melting to liquid in the scorching heat, and we left traces of it on our faces as we tried to wipe away the sweat. We could have spoken then of our traditions, but our breath was labored under the punishing sun. When it seemed that almost the entire congregation was helping renovate one of the rental units years ago, and I was hunched over a concrete saw, the din and the dust and the thick gray paste on my mask rendered any chatter about our shared values and aspirations superfluous. I helped Andrew build the scaffolds that he used to install the lights here in the sanctuary. We could have discussed how our heritage also brings light to our lives, but hauling and stacking the frames and tying them safely together with cross braces demanded our full attention. And it's the same with making coffee, something I am so pleased to do on choir Sundays. I try to get the coffee and tea ready as the choir emerges from their pre-service rehearsal, chatting in the warm afterglow of their choral communion. We could talk about values then, but there are creamers to fill and spills to attend to. And when the coffee cups are washed and back in the cupboard, when the tables are rolled away after a dinner, when the scaffolds are brought down and the ladders are, stored, are stowed in the sea can and we turn off the lights and we lock the doors and there is no one left to speak of values and principles and heritage. I do wonder sometimes what it is that keeps us all working together, singing together, dining together, gathering together. And what is it? that keeps us striving together for something that seems so clear and perfect and yet so unattainable. I think I know what it is, but it's not something we talk about much. Maybe that's the way it's supposed to be. Our next hymn is number 301, Touch the Earth, Reach the Sky. Please rise in body and spirit, as we sing together hymn number 301.
I will now lead our responsive reading. We will remember them. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So long as they live, we too shall live for they are now a part of us as we remember them. I want you to know I'm not contagious, but I do cough a lot. So I have a sinus infection. I got it from the, um, the grain coming off, the leaf mold, the dryness, and then it just didn't go away and didn't go away, and then I forgot that I shouldn't sing because it, it just gets me right there, and I cough and cough and cough. So I apologize for leaving the room and coughing. I think I did that a couple of weeks ago as well. So hopefully, this will clear it up and um, the snow will happen and the leaf mold will get covered up <laughs> and it won't be so dusty. So I, for one, am really hoping for lots of snow really soon <laughs> so that I start to feel better. And I invite you now into a time of meditation, of reflection, contemplation. I invite you to take a moment and center yourself in your chair to take some time to kind of do a body scan and see where you need to wiggle some, wiggle your wiggles out, or <clears throat> breathe into a spot of discomfort. I invite you to focus in on your breath, feel it entering your body, your lungs filling up and encouraging the air in, taking what it needs and then discarding the rest. Just as we do in our lives, we take it all in. We keep what we need, and we let go of what we no longer need or want in our lives. In this meditation time, I'm going to read in Blackwood, Wood, Black, Back, Blackwater Woods, by Mary Oliver. I'm going to read it twice through with a moment of silence in between. And after the second time reading, 
there'll be a few moments of silence, about a minute, and then Karen will bring us in with our meditation hymn, Comfort Me. And the words will come up on the screen. So just take a couple more deep cleansing breaths. Arrive here in this place. Allow the worries and the stresses of the week of your life to fade away as you allow this time to nurture you, to refresh you, to bring you some peace. <clears throat> In Blackwater Woods, Mary Oliver. Look, the trees are turning their own bodies into pillars of light, are giving of the rich fragrance of cinnamon and fulfillment. The long tapers of cattails cat are bursting and floating away over the blue shoulders of the ponds, and every pond, no matter what its name is, is nameless now. Every year, everything I have ever learned in my lifetime leads back to this. The fires and the black river of loss whose other side is salvation, whose meaning none of us will ever know. To live in this world, you must be able to do three things. To love what is mortal, to hold it against your bones, knowing your own life depends on it. And when the time comes to let it go, to let it go. in Blackwater Woods. Look, the trees are turning their own bodies into pillars of light, are giving of the rich fragrance of cinnamon and fulfillment. The long tapers of cattails are bursting and floating away over the blue shoulders of the ponds. And every pond, no matter what its name is, is nameless now. Every year, everything I have ever learned in my lifetime leads back to this. The fires and the black river of loss, whose other side is salvation, whose meaning none of us will ever know. To live in this world, you must be able to do three things. To love what is mortal. To hold it against your bones knowing your own life depends on it. And when the time comes to let it go, that you let it go. Just a moment, a minute or so of silence. And then Karen will bring us in.
That was lovely. Thank you. I'm a singer. This is killing me not to be able to sing. This too shall pass. This is a service of remembrance. This is a service that asks us to remember who was here before, that we might no longer see with our eyes, hug with our arms, but perhaps very real to us nonetheless. A congregation is not a thing. It is a people. Congregations are made up of people, not budgets, except that budgets and committees, boards and task forces are very real needs when it comes to a successful congregation. However, these things, those things, exist in service to the people, not the other way around. They exist so that the people can be here and do the things that they want to do. We have, we have budgets so that we can buy coffee and hire musicians, things that make our lives better. The whole idea of being part of a congregation is that our lives are made better by being here. When people are asked, I've probably said this before, what they appreciate most about being part of a congregation is that they found friends here. They made friends, lifelong friends sometimes. <clears throat> and it's also about finding, the, uh, the other second kind of most popular answer is that finding other like-minded individuals to have conversations with. Last week, we talked about the heritage of, Unitarian, uni, uni, about, of Unitarianism as well as Universalism. We talked about both of those things and how they came together and evolved and how, it, how our Unitarian Universalism faith was created, how it became in this era. Today, I'd like to explore the heritage that is specific to UCE. However, I am not the expert on UCE. You are. We have memorial candles here set up. And in a moment, I'm going to invite you to come and light a memorial candle for a person or something you hold dear about UCE. It's time to tell stories or talk about someone that you loved that was here. Or perhaps, as John did, a time of swinging a hammer or making a cake. You could light the candle and then come to the microphone and speak to the candle if you like, or if you prefer to just light a silent candle, I invite you to do that as well, if you prefer. If you do choose to speak into the mic, I'm going to ask you to say your name first, and if you're comfortable, your pronouns. Karen will play for us for a moment to think about who we would like to honor this morning, and I think I put it backwards, so I'm going to go fix it. Hmm, nope, we're just going to leave it. It'll be what it will be. So, um, but I'd like you to try to light your candles from this side so that the people on Zoom are able to see you and hear you and see your face as you light the candle and speak to it. Uh, for those of you on Zoom, um, please listen along, and if there's something you'd like to put in the chat, please feel free, and uh, I get those chats afterwards, so I'll be interested to see uh, what, you, what you have to say. Karen will play for us for a moment, and that gives you a chance to think about who you would like to honor this morning. And when she is finished, just come along. I'm going to write, light a candle right away, um, as I said in the introduction or in the announcements, um, for the people in the Middle East that are suffering at this time. Go ahead.
This candle is for Gordon, Gordon Ritchie. My name is Marilyn Gay. My pronouns, pronouns are she, her. And I lit a candle remembering Helen Reddy, who is a very important member of this church. When I first, the first day I arrived to join the choir, I recognized her right away because I had seen her at Project Plowshare meetings and other planning meetings about peace activism. And um, we miss her. My name is Ali, and I lit a candle for Bonnie Sharplin, who passed recently. Um, Bonnie is my friend, but she's also the bravest woman I've ever met, and taught me everything I need to know about how to live and how to die. My name is Carol Hutchings. I came to the church because of the choir, because of the wonderful choir. And I lit a candle for our choir directors. I hope that Karen is having a wonderful trip. And I sure hope that Gordon is doing well and getting stronger every day. I have also lit a candle for Bonnie Sharplin and for Gerard's partner, uh, Stephen Greenhalgh for uh, Barb Appleton, and for my great-grandson, Kason Brooks. My name is Yolene. Uh, pronouns she and her. I lit this candle for Ada Nanning, who many years ago, in the year 2000, when I joined the congregation, um, was one of the people, and there were others as well, but she was one of the people that were so incredibly kind to me and just took me under her wing. I was quite lost at that time in my life and she just so kindly, gently, with such incredible warmth and wisdom took me under her wing. And Ada grew up in Holland and was part of, as a teenager, part of the uh, resistance there during the Second World, World War where she um, on her bicycle, delivered messages and helped in that way with the resistance. My name is Art Breyer, and I like to also remember the struggles in the Ukraine and the people's wish to be free. Good morning. My name's Bonnie. My pronouns are she and her. Um, I kind of came up here for a different reason. I wanted to remember the time that uh, something positive happened around here um, when we hired drag queens for our congregation dinner. And they have since started a monthly drag show in our church. And 
you wanted stories about UCE, and that's one that makes me smile every time I think about it. My name is Jan, and my pronouns are she, her. I'm here to uh, remember Nancy Collins, who was a dear friend and who came to the church via the choir and then ended up becoming quite involved and part of our board, and she was a, a neighbor of mine and uh, always very positive and fun to be with. My name is Susan Rattan, and I want to remember Bernie Keeler, who was the financial giant of this church and, and really a giant of the national church for 35 years. He did everything financial. Uh, he wrote the budget, he did the books, and he taught me how to be treasurer, which was a job I, I ended up doing for a lot of years. And my last memory of him, he was in hospital in his last days, and I went in with the hymn book and sang a couple of well-known hymns with him, and one of them, the other three men in the room started singing, and the nurse started singing. And Bernie didn't actually sing, but he enjoyed it. <coughs> my name's Sally Ann Mowat. My pronouns are she and her. Sorry. Thank no, you. Um, I've just started coming to UCE. I'm a former member of Westwood. Um, so I thought at the beginning that I didn't have anything to share about memories of UCE, um, but I do. And uh, so um, this space, which I think is remarkably beautiful, um, is one that I initially visited uh, because friends came here for um, a rental situation, they used, used some of the space, um, and resulting from seeing how beautiful the space was, I um, was once privileged to host um, an Alberta-wide uh, event in, in this very room, which was very wonderful. Um, but with respect to UCE, what I've mostly been here for uh, is different kinds of special and fundraising events, such as for uh, Reverend Fulgence. Uh, and also, I'm thinking about the fact that um, Martin Kerr, who uh, many of you know, um, it was in this room that I first heard him, and I've attended many, many of his uh, concerts has sometimes been too large a word for what Martin does, but um, some of you may know he opened for Dermot uh, Kennedy at uh, Roger's Place two nights ago and is appearing at the Windspear uh, tomorrow night. And uh, so I knew him when. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Anyone else? We'll just take a moment to take that in and breathe. Does anyone else have a memory that they would like to share of a story? Oh. Paulette, thank you. You might want to come over here, and you won't get, that one's got a lot of heat coming off of it. There it goes. Thank you. Hi. I'm Pauline Hagel, and I've been a Unitarian maybe 50 years. I joined the church, I was working at Grant McEwen, and a man called Jack Allen, who some of you will remember. Jack was a really different person. Jack had a wife and a girlfriend, <laughs> and they both would come and sit and hold hands in church every Sunday together. <coughs> and both of these women were really, really nice people. And I was single at the time, and I didn't like Sundays, because they were alone and lonely, unless I got together with my kids. So I thought, okay, I'll go to this jerk that Jack goes to, and here I am. And so I owe my membership to this church to a very 
untraditional person. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. The memorial table is still open for your memories. Let us hold all that we have ho held, uh, hold all that we have heard dear. Let us remember those that have come before, that will come after, that we are creating something here together that is special, that is sacred, that is important. And it's so important. We've heard the stories that tell us they're important because we are accepted, we are loved, we are befriended, we are cared about, we are cared for. And sometimes being in a congregation gives us something to do. Amen. I would like to invite us into um, singing our last hymn. See you, Humba. I should have looked at my notes first, Karen. Sorry. Let us take a moment of reflection, and Karen will kindly play for us for a few moments as we think back on these stories and these people. Thank you. I'm so glad we didn't miss that. It was beautiful. And now, for our closing hymn, Sia Hamba. We'll sing it in both Swahili and in English. And just do your best with it. Sia Hamba Kukinen Kwenkos. Sia Hamba Kukinen Kwenkos. Just do your best. Just sing along, mumble along, do your best. And of all importantly, have fun. Sing out and dance if you feel like it. Okay, see ya, Humba.
sing in there. Thank you. John. Thank you so much. I would like to now call again on Chantal to extinguish the chalice while I read a quote um, inspired by our ancestors by Leah Durland Jones. For those who came before us, we offer gratitude and thanks. May their memories be a blessing. May we feel surrounded by their love as we go forth from this time and place, let us be inspired by their courage, their wisdom, and their dreams. Let us honor them by doing the work of living boldly, loving mightily, and creating heaven on earth. Amen, and blessed be. Thank you, Chantal. Well, I sang, so let's see if I can get any words out. I offer you these words of benediction as you go out into your week. May this time together have filled your hearts, given you courage and strength, and renewed your spirits to face whatever it is that you have coming towards you this coming week. And may we gather again next Sunday for another time of renewal and fellowship. And do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. You know, some things break, lots of things can break, but also things can be mended, but not with time, as they say, with intention. So I invite you to go and love intentionally, and of course, love extravagantly, and always love unconditionally. For the broken world waits in darkness for the light that is you. Go now in peace, gentle people. Go in peace. And now let us sing our linking song, Carry the Flame. And um, you can form a whatever configuration you like. And uh, you do not have to hold hands if you do not want to. I will not. Okay. Looks like we're good to go. Nope, not quite. Not quite. Okay, give me a sign. We're ready. Okay.